so the main thing that pbr rendering about is really just trying to stick to all of these physical principles and effects when you set up your lighting and surfacing and materials and everything else. doing lighting with realistic fall off and having materials that have things like energy conservation and fresnel effect. building all of this stuff in is part of working towards pbr. the new thing with pbr as it stands is that more and more rendering engines are switching over to having more PBR workflows right the way through. That is to say the renderers are expecting PBR materials, lighting and everything else. However, we have always been able to work towards certain elements of PBR like doing energy conservation in specular and diffuse, like putting Fresnel effects on things even if it's just with simple gradients. Renderers themselves have always erred towards trying to do things in photorealistic fashion, but certain effects have traditionally been either slow to compute or there haven't existed accelerations and optimizations and other new tricks. And as such, renderers have had to supplement their PBR abilities and of course move away from trying to solve the whole rendering in a truly accurate fashion by employing certain cheats. If you're going to set up all of your lighting and material properties properly and in a PBR respectful way, and you were willing to do some further digging in handling the input and output from LightWave, you could do a PBR workflow modestly well for quite some time now. But for ease and speed much of the time, many of us become used to the sorts of tricks and shortcuts that Lightwavers had to offer. And the current rendering in 2015, especially when it comes to certain tools and material presets, incorporates elements of both a more PBR-sided workflow while still retaining the legacy elements of the cheat-away workflow. The main thing that made the PBR elements of the workflow much more accessible and easy to use was the introduction of color space in Lightwave 10. All of the rendering happens in a linear color space, so properly managing your inputs, textures and whatnot, and your outputs, all of your finished renders and that, and how their color spaces relate to the rendering color space is important. For 99.9% .9 of all users, the simple and straightforward thing to do is just to use the sRGB preset for colour space and you're fine. The odd few who aren't fine probably have a reason for it and know why and how to set that correctly for themselves. Once we've got that, then when we start lighting things, we'll straight away have much more realistic lighting. Given that we set our lights up properly, now of course intensity fall off for area and the like we don't want. This is sort of cheat stuff from earlier days because one of the things that working in the correct color space does for us is get the linear calculations for the light out correctly. As such, when you're using inverse square fall off, which is what you basically almost always wish to be using for PBR, then you get a much better level of brightness gradient essentially. Setting other fall offs or no fall off aren't of course realistic, so ideally they ought to be kept away from. There might be the odd situation where you need to just give something a little nudge and an artistic tweak and then it's fine to just, you know, push the odd light here and there. But when you're doing your initial base setup, it's good to just stick with the realistic and then work from that once you've laid that in. Another cheat that we also had to handle the fall off of the light in Lightwave has been this, the range nominal distance, where you can, you know, nominal distance from where the light begins to fall off. This again, because of the different treatment of the fall off in the color spaces, this was to help you correct for it visually, essentially. And this is one of the ways that we've been used to rendering and setting up lighting in Lightwave, is that you can sort of nudge it about, change the fall offs, change the ranges, you know, mix the brightness up and down and cross tweak things that way to get the look of the lighting that you want. To try and keep it PBR, then you should set your intensity and color to, you know, whatever they're wanting to be. Use the inverse squared fall off and just leave your range at one meter. This whole lighting and color space deal is the main part of starting PBR right in Lightwave 2015. Just on flat gray shade, you're starting out with realistic light, brightness and fall off, shading, shadowing and all of that and it's coming out on your screen or in a rendered image in the correct color space, as you would expect such a thing to photograph. The next step is the surfaces, of course, 
and so incorporating things like Fresnel into diffuse and reflection, perhaps also into reflective blurring, perhaps with some specular tinting as well, and of course not using the old-fashioned, you know, cheat specular, using proper reflection here, and in place of glossiness using a reflection blurring setting, which is kind of like a roughness setting. And when you turn that on, then, you know, you get a nicely realistic-ish thing, and we've got a bit of a reflection of our ball there, but because we're not using old cheat specular, you know, we can't get a specular highlight of the light itself. So of course the good old fashioned way that we've always done that when we wanted to actually be able to see a light in reflection is we just grab a piece of geometry to use. We do want to be aware to match this to our lighting. So in this case, it's pure white at a luminosity of 100 to match a light that is pure white at an intensity of 100. But with that stuff matched up realistically, then of course we get to both see the light if we want in the scene, but we have, of course, its reflection in our reflective material here. And we get this realistic specular highlight. We can make ourselves a more metallic style surface here, again, following largely the same basic principles. We see how we get a lighting and diffuse with a matched reflection for the amount of light that we have and all the brightnesses of the components fit and they match, they're plausible together. And that's it. Essentially, we've got something that is, for all intents and purposes, PBR. Of course, we can try these same surfaces on other items and see the effect and the quality of the surface that we get out there. And so working this way, provided that, you know, we stick to the rules and observe them as much as possible during our setup, gives us great results and materials that behave really well. Of course, we've got material nodes, many of which work in a PBR fashion because they do proper reflective specular. And these, of course, work out really well and they look consistent again with the lighting, with the other items in the scene and how they're responding to the lighting and so on. Once we've got all this, then we'll find that it also behaves correctly under different lighting setups or different ways of working the lighting. So even though we can see this plane, it's not doing anything, all of the light is coming from the actual area light. But if we go ahead and we turn that light off and we turn the GI on, then the light is emitted from the plane itself. And what we're getting, of course, is a broadly equivalent result. The other way to light with GI is, of course, with a backdrop. And so we can add in an HDRI, for instance, perhaps losing our light there. Because we're using this backdrop, we should have some backdrop importance sampling. But if we have it at 100%, and provided that the image has been in linear space, which any good HDR wrap should already be in, like we should have detected it as such with our color space settings. If it looks wonky, you can always adjust it. But because we've got the right color space for our backdrop and our render and our output, we've got these materials that either by our manual creation or by the, you know, features of the material itself are respecting PBR. And so the backdrop, the lighting, the reflections all work and are properly balanced with one another. And there you go. We see that we get really nice PBR results out of 2015 by using its tools, its lights, color space in a way towards PBR so that it can make best use of its own materials and any materials that we set up ourselves, we make in a PBR way as well. And working this way, going with all of these features will help give us better renders both in 2015 and moving forwards.